I remember back in 2015, I was working as a technology integration specialist. So my job was to go into our classrooms and help teachers use technology efficiently. And I applied for a grant through a local cell phone company and they sent out cell phones and Google Cardboard, which was just that. It was like a cardboard box that you put the cell phone in and held it up to your your (laughs) face. Yes. And we had to make sure that these little elementary hands held the box on the sides. If the kids tipped their heads, the phones would fall out. Like if you think about how just VR has changed in 10 years, right? I mean, we're no longer literally holding a cardboard box, hoping that we don't break cell phones. Hello, my name is Lisa Roger from Otimo, and I want to welcome you to the CIO podcast. All right. Well, welcome everybody to another episode of a CIO podcast with Lisa. And I'm so excited today to have Amy Jackal here with us today. And I want to tell you a little bit about her. So um, as Green Bay Public School District's Executive Director of Technology and Information, she serves a crucial role as a liaison between the district's operational teams and their educational teams. She's experienced in both large and small school districts. Um, and Amy enjoys along, work, really working alongside her teams and the individuals that really implement the initiatives uh, for innovation and for really improvement for the school. Amy is responsible for coordinating a successful edu- uh, execution of district-wide projects related to hardware and software deployment and usage. Amy was a teacher. Amy currently right now holds a master's in education technology from Marion University. She has a certified education technology leader national certificate and an inter- International Society for Technology and Education certificate. And most recently, she has been nominated for the Public Sector CIO Orbi Award. So, um, so, which is so exciting being an Orbi nominee and a finalist. So congratulations, Amy. Thank you, thank you. We're so excited that you're here today. Um, and. You know, for people who don't know, what's it like to work for a school district? What is it like to work for the Green Bay Public School District? And what's that like? I think people know what the mission is about, but maybe you could tell us a little bit. Sure, absolutely. Well, first, thank you for having me. It's an honor to be here today and speaking with you. Um, You know, I think when people think about Green Bay right away, they think about the Green Bay Packers. Right. That's right. And yes, um, heads, right? <laughs> yes, they think cheese heads, brats, cheese curds, packers. Right. <laughs> um, but the Green Bay School District has actually been around for roughly 150 years. Wow. Um, we've been here for a long time and our city is divided by a river. So we have our east side and our west side, and that has brought a big rival rivalry almost between mm. those two sides of the the river, right? And our east side city stadium is actually the original football field to the Green Bay Packers. So we do have a lot of that tradition within our city. Um, But aside from the Packers, we are here to educate all of our students and our mission is really to provide our students an avenue so that they leave our district, either college, career or community ready to succeed within our diverse world. Um, So we have uh, 42 schools, 43 buildings within our district and roughly 19,000 students this year. Wow. It's a a big, it is the fourth largest district in Wisconsin. Um, We function in more like city-based school systems versus county-based. So we think for the state of Wisconsin, uh, but maybe smaller compared to other states. That is, I love that when you said you get, you have them not only ready for school, but ready for the community. Um, you said community ready, I think. I, I thought, wow, that's yes. really cool. That, I love that. I love that um, description. So thank you for that. That's, that mm-hmm. was awesome. All right. So we, we need to get loosened up here a little bit. So we're going to, okay. we're going to, we're going to just do a little rapid fire. And I know you know how this goes. So we won't, we won't get into the instructions. We're just going to jump right in. You ready? Let's do it. Okay. Dogs or cats? Dogs. Unix or Windows? 
Windows. Country or rock? Country. Mac or PC? Ooh, I work every day on a PC, but if I had to buy my own, it'd be a Mac. Okay. <laughs> Texting or calling? I like calling. Hmm. Yeah. Early bird or night owl? Early bird. Samsung or iPhone? iPhone. 60s, 70s, 80s, or 90s music? 90s. Printing or cursive? Printing. On prem or in the cloud? Cloud. Console or PC gaming? Oh, I'm I'm totally guessing on this one. PC. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Good. Uh, smooth or chunky? Smooth. Uh, Beatles or the Stones? The Beatles. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fiction or nonfiction? Nonfiction. Take out or dine in? Dine in. Shoes on or shoes off in the house? Off. Still or sparkling? Sparkling. Star Trek or Star Wars? Star Wars. All right. As you know, I always let everybody ask or explain why you pick Star Wars over Star Trek. Well, I have to tell you, um, that was just a gut reaction. Mm. I've not watched any Star Wars or Star Trek videos, so to be determined. Yeah. There has been a trend in the last couple of people I've interviewed that that like make this huge crucial mistake of admitting to the technical community yes. you, that you have not partaked in either. Never, no, it's, it's, a, it's on the to-do list. Maybe someday. I mean, it gets cold up there in Green Bay. Like in the wintertime, maybe you put it on your like binge list to go through. Something. Yes, there you go. There you go. That's it's on the list. Consider it noted. Oh my gosh. All right. All right. Well, as you know, um, we're all about transformation at Otimo and digital transformation and app modernization. That's what we do. But we want to learn from, you know, experts like yourself that have so much wisdom to partake and, and give out to everyone. Um, and so we'd love to hear your thoughts on, you know, and your experience and, and learn from you today. So thank you for doing this with us today. And um, let's just jump right in. So from the CIO level perspective, like what's your role when it comes to like your organization's long term vision? When you're thinking about techn technology and transformation, how that goes together, what's your role in this process? Yeah, this is a great, a great question. And I think those are really play a crucial role in supporting the company's vision. Um, and that word support, right, I think is very meaningful to me because you have multiple operational departments in a school district. And then you have the educational departments in a school district and operations always very want, like we want much to be not noticed, right? We want the heat to work. We want the lights to turn on. We want you to be able to connect to the internet, access the resources you need, make the phone calls you make and not really notice us. Cause that means things are working right. So I think, um, that CIO has that important day-to-day -day role to make sure the operations are going, things are, but then we're also responsible for creating and implementing strategy that aligns with that long-term goal um, and helping to make sure that the technology investments align with that long-term goal. And oftentimes, you know, technology changes so quickly, but yet you need time to implement things. So, um, I think the CIO just has the opportunity to bring in those unique viewpoints really Absolutely. to support, right? To support that growth and improve upon efficiencies and the work of, of the organization. Yeah. And I think, you know, you hit the nail on the head, you know, when, when, the, when you're not noticed or they don't have to call you, that's often when we're doing our best work, right? And, yeah, and, you know when you're when, <laughs> but but we but we don't want to be forgotten, right? We need a seat at that for that again that strategic look forward. Mm -hmm. We have to be a part of the conversation. So yes, uh, yeah, that that was great. I like that. Um, so when you think about um, 
again, let's let's take a real broader look, even go broader. So we talked about the organization. Let's talk about, I want to just jump into your view, Amy, of like, what's going on with the world? Where are we heading? Where, you know, what, and I know this is going to tie right back into what you're doing with the Green Bay Public School District, but how, you know, from a technology perspective, you know, what do you see? Where are we going from your lens? You know, what are you experiencing and how does that affect what you do? You know, just yesterday I was talking with um, a parent from my son's school and we got to talking about how much technology has changed over the last 10 years. And that's one thing we know, right? Change is constant, it's going to come. But we were talking about back in 10 years ago, 2014, it doesn't seem long ago, but from 2014 to now, we have had to navigate things like, um, where do devices like Alexa and Echo fit into the classroom? Do we want them in the classroom? What are the data privacy you know, things that we need to think about? So in general, smart home devices have become a thing for our, our teaching staff, for our families. Um, things like VR technology. 2014, mm -hmm. that wasn't what it is today. I remember back in 2015, I was working as a technology integration specialist. So my job was to go into our classrooms and help teachers use technology efficiently. And I applied for a grant through a local cell phone company and they sent out cell phones and Google Cardboard, which was just that. It was like a cardboard box that you put the cell phone in and held it up to your your no face. <laughs> yes. And we had to make sure that these little elementary hands held the box on the sides. If the kids tipped their heads, the phones would fall out. No, no. So, like if you think about how just VR has changed in 10 years, right? We, I mean, we're no longer literally holding a cardboard box, hoping that we don't break cell phones. Um, even things like smartwatches and like wearable health devices, fitness trackers, that wasn't a thing like it is today, 10 years ago. Um, we talked about our kids' dependency or really love for like Netflix and Hulu and Disney Plus and all these streaming services that weren't around 10 years from now. So I can't imagine where we're going to be in 2034. Right, with the rapid pace of yeah. of like collaboration tools. Like in the past few years, we've seen tools like Zoom and Slack and you know Office 365. They are allowing us to move into these remote work environments and take phone calls from the cloud and all of these different components that have changed the way we work. And of course now AI is the hot topic. So I, I guess I can't say exactly where the world is heading, but I know it will look nothing like it does today. That's a perfect answer. Isn't that crazy? That's a perfect answer, actually, um, because we won't. And I, I would think anybody who can who says that they really know, you know, probably really does it. But yeah, uh, taking a fun guess. Um, yeah. I saw an advertisement just recently about it was almost like a personal hovercraft. It was like a drone meets an airplane that like you would sit in and you close the lid and it would take you wherever you needed to go. So yeah. like maybe, maybe this will be a thing. I don't know. We'll, the Jetsons. I mean, yes. that reminds me of the Jetsons, right? The little plastic yeah. thing come around, zoom, off it would go. Yes. Yeah, yes. We'll see. Yes. Yeah. We'll Between autonomous cars <laughs> and Jetsons, like drone, like, you mm -hmm. know, uh, oh my gosh. Yeah. What could go wrong? Um, <laughs> Speaking of which, <laughs> I a couple of concepts that you brought up in, in this last segment um, uh, lead me to think about two things, like the fun side, and, I, and I'm just imagining, I'm wondering if others are imagining as, as well, what that, you, you were describing innovation and how you were testing it with teachers and how you bring it into the school system and how does that work with the school system? Um, you know, I know I'm thinking, you know, of the of the organizations that I've worked in the past. You know, we have, you know, maybe very I use bureaucratic but mature processes that help us around governance and help us with our investments and help us with, 
how we introduce innovation so that we're really sure that it's going to have positive impacts operationally and to the bottom line. I'm just curious, you know, what are some of the considerations around innovation when you're bringing them, like whether it's the Google with the box, you know, and the the VC or the beginnings of, uh, you know, uh, video to where we are today with AI or where we'll be in, in 2034 with something we don't know. What, what does that journey look like? I'm wondering if it's different than the corporate journey. Yes, I'm sure it is. Um, one of one of the large things that I notice when I meet with folks that serve in the corporate world in a similar position is they're always worried about the, the dollar, right? The bottom yeah. line, the profit. Um, and here our profit is a little bit different, right? We want the success of our students is our is our profit. Now, of course, we're learning. I, I, this is, yes. Oh my gosh, that's wonderful. Yes, it's a little different, right? Um, but we have unique strategies put in place specifically around purchasing or the implementation of curricular resources. So if um, the district wants to roll out a new software system or a teacher finds this really cool tool that they want to use, there's process put in place to make sure that the resource, either the thing or the software aligns with not only our curriculum, but student data privacy. So the process allows the individual to say, hey, I'm interested in using 3D printers for the first time. I'm interested in using this AI platform. And then we go through and we look, okay, does this hardware piece work on our network? Does it work within our infrastructure? Who's going to train staff on how to use this? Um, is there student data privacy being shared? If so, um, we need a data privacy agreement in place. And just yesterday, I looked in preparation for today, we have over 260 student data privacy agreements in place for resources that we use. So if we are sharing um, anything that can identify a student, you know, their name, their birth date, their gender, if we're sharing their voice, if, um, we're sharing grades, testings, data, you name it, we want that data privacy agreement in place or we're not going to move forward with that resource. So even if we are- Wait, I, have to, I have to ask you, Amy, is that an agreement with the individual student? With the company. With the company, got it, got it. Okay, I, I, yes. I, was, so, I imagined all these kindergartners signing data private. That is not what you meant. <laughs> no, so, no. It's, so it's, it's, take like, you're, um, you're trying to get assurances from the vendors and the providers that they're going to respect the laws of Wisconsin, the laws, federal laws, the local laws that have to do with data privacy and protecting, um, you know, those that you guys serve the students. Yes, yes. Okay. And along okay. with that, they have to let Sorry, us know. Sorry, I, I was slightly, up reach. slightly um, confused, but I, I'm sure I was. Yes. No, I'm glad you clarified that. Because, public, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's probably something that um, even if you work at the college or university level, like you're probably not thinking about stuff like that the way we are with littles under the age of 18, under 13. Exactly. Yeah. So we have all of these processes in place, but it's through those processes that we really get to see the innovation that staff are looking for, right? Um, again, if I think 10 years ago, we were getting a lot of requests for those 3D printers, mm -hmm. um, interactive panels, um, different devices that we didn't have in the classroom at the time. But those Forward, things right, us. smart boards with the internet connection. Yes, yes, you got it. You got it. Yeah, so it's really teacher led sometimes or, you know, it, it's coming bubbling up from our teachers then in this case. Yeah, correct. And our district is very lucky. We have a library media specialist in every one of our buildings and we have technology integrators as well. So again, their job is to support the use of technology through teaching. Um, they bring to us a lot of innovative ideas as well because they live in that space. They're connecting yeah. with other people uh, throughout the state, throughout the nation and bringing in the ideas of, well, here's how we can use AI. 
here's how we can use those 3D printers again 10 years ago. Here's how we can implement smart, smart notebook, whatever it might be. So we're lucky. We have a good, good group of staff to support our teaching staff. That's wonderful that you have technology specialists along with librarians. Yes. Uh, you, everyone thinks about the librarian, right? You know, we, we all have that experience, but to have a, you know, professional technologist as well, thinking about innovation and being that partner, that, that advocate and liaison, that's wonderful that you, that, uh, that you're set up that way, that you're able to do that. Yeah, absolutely. That's super cool. All right. So I, you got me thinking about governance and you got me, you know, I'm, I'm seeing the lawyers with their, you know, data privacy, you know, <laughs> contracts that they're sending back to the vendors. Uh, but then I get, get to thinking about the data itself and how we have to protect that. But more importantly, you know, I really think, you know, data is the, what used to be, you know, follow the money in the eighties. It's now follow the data. Um, what do you guys uh, in the school district leverage analytics? You know, everybody's into data analytics, right? It's the, the hot, sexy, I've got my data analytics certificate. I'm ready to roll. I've got the credits. Like used to, when you used to get a PMP or you get something else now, I've got my data analytics certificate. So, you know, I'm the hot new commodity, but how do you all leverage analytics, you know, to help, you know, foster what you're doing from operational perspective, strategic perspective, um, any insights there in, in your world? Yeah. Well, as I said earlier, we are working very hard every day to make sure that our students are college, career, and community ready. And we need the data to back that up. So we were inspired this year to truly like hone in on what, what the data is telling us about our students to ensure that they are ready to graduate, that they can be successful, and then when they get to their senior year, we're not like, surprise, you're short credits or you don't have what you need to graduate, right? Right. So um, we put a huge focus on this work to track the, the on readiness to graduate. And we have a team of programmers that have been doing a wonderful job taking a deep dive into our data to make sure that we have accurate data going into our data visualization tools. So we can have accurate data going out. Correct. Very um, important. Garbage in, garbage out. Yes, yes. And they're really allowing us the ability to examine if a student is on track or off track. And currently, right now, we're just looking at from a high school perspective. But as we continue this work, our goal is to even move down to like roughly that third grade level where we can start oh. their key indicators that are showing us maybe we need to put some additional supports in for a student or have additional discussions with family whatever it might be to make sure that we are graduating, you know, as many students as possible, what we would like to have as a 100% graduation rate, right? Um, so we'll see where we are a few years from now, but we're just getting started with this data analytics, specifically focusing on that goal. But it's really, it's a fun thing to be able to say to families, like everybody here in Green Bay is rooting for the success of your student including the Department of Technology. Right? You don't typically think that because most people in technology, we, we're not teachers. A lot of us are more technical in nature. Um, but I think that's one of the fun things of working for a school district is at the end of the day, we are all here for the success of that individual kid sitting in that individual seat, you know, rooting for them to, to cross that stage, which is coming up. Our graduations actually start in about 16 days. Um, so it's a good reminder this time of year of, of what we work for all year. Okay. So I know if I'm a parent and I'm listening to this right now, I have been hyper focused on exactly what you said right now. And I want to know what are those key indicators of performance at the third grade level that are going to let you know whether or not you have to have a conversation with me about my job. Right. I think that myself and I do not have third graders yet. Um, <laughs> So we haven't defined those out yet. So okay. I don't want to say specific indicators, but I am sure um, like on grade level with reading and mm -hmm. math will probably be within those indicators. Um, but those have not been defined out. Again, right now we're just focusing on our high school students, but I'm sure things like attendance and, um, you know, if you're on track with your reading, I'm sure things like that would pop into those as indicators. 
Well, and I'm sure, again, I'm thinking privacy issues. Part of my brain is going, oh, let's throw some AI at this. But then, you know, there's like so many danger zones there. So, you know, we've got to be careful about, you know, being fair and equitable, et cetera. And so I, that's why I'm just was hyper curious about, well, you know, other than grades, you know, what would those key indicators do? Well, thank you. That will that was yeah. so learn about that. Um, so I'd love to talk to you a little bit about, uh, again, we'll pull it back conversation a little bit closer to transformation uh, and think about some transformations that you have done um, in the past. And um, maybe you can give me like uh, a success story or how many people to learn more from like the challenges, you know, if you either want to share like a, like a, a, a really like heroic moment or, or maybe one where it was really hard and, and why was it really hard and what did you do to overcome that? You can go either way. You know, I think COVID really forced us to make some shifts. Oh my gosh. Right? Yeah. Especially and in the schools. Yes. And pre COVID, I think often how we operate was just normal and it maybe had some pain points, but it works. So we didn't think much about it. Um, but COVID really showed for us how many challenges we had with communication. So for existence, for example, our phones were all local physical phones on our network. So pre COVID, I remember like being in the car, driving from one school to the next, I would get a voicemail that would come to my email inbox saying, Hey, call me at this extension. Well, my cell phone can't call an extension. So I would dial the regular number of the, the school and have to talk to the main office and say, I'm trying to reach so-and-so, but I'd come in as a cell phone number. So they wouldn't know who I was. And it was a big rig and a roll. But um, through, through the COVID experience, we realized we needed to move to a cloud-based phone system. And that was a huge uptaking because like I said, we service 42 schools, 43 buildings. That's a lot of phones, right? A lot. Um, so, I mean, aside from just like physically swapping out the phone, there's then all of the components of teaching staff how to use the phone. And we moved from the phone in the classroom belonging to the teacher to the phone in the classroom belonging to the room. So the shift mm -hmm. in the mindset of, well, I have a personal phone number for the school district, a school issued phone, that I can make phone calls on from my laptop, or I can download an app and I can make phone calls on my cell phone without giving away my private cell phone number. Right. When this phone in my room is just for my room, that doesn't make sense. So we had, um, I'd say about a half a year of really being like, the phone in your room is like a payphone. Think of it like a payphone. The okay. phone on your computer is yours. Um, but now that we are a few years in, this has been a huge game changer for us because now we have staff members that can make phone calls anywhere. We're keeping staff, staff cell phone numbers private. Um, the work doesn't stop if you're out of the building. Our parents or our staff members, I should say, have the ability to communicate with parents the way they want to communicate with parents, right? There's an SMS feature of this cloud-based phone system. so. We've just really expanded our communication abilities in ways like what I said, you know, prior to pre-COVID, this, this wasn't an issue, it was just how we did business. But now when you're in a, a better system, you're like, oh, that was kind of a, kind of a pain, kind of a hill that we had to climb every day. So Yeah, I, it, it's so funny. I went through a very similar, same, we have just brought teams on and um, everybody went home and I just took their phones away. And when they came back a year later, they were gone and they didn't remember that they had them before. So it was yes. never, yeah. never, ever waste a good disruption, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. You know, and the expansion of the phones too, like it just shifted our mind with even video based communication. But with the shift to the video based communication, it's kind of like gone are the days of having to get to work early because there's a big admin meeting downtown and parking is going to fill up. It's not a big deal. We no longer have hundreds of people coming to a central location, but we're saving time, right? There, no more drive time is not a thing. You can just hang up the, the video call and go off to work. And um, 
I don't know, that move to the virtual environment has just really changed the way we work and showed us how maybe our systems were lacking a few years ago. That's good. I mean, you're absolutely right, 100% right. Um, and I'm gonna pull that thread a little bit and twist it. Um, so when you think about your own staff then, and the and when it, and their role with the transformation and their role with learning and their role with adoption you know what's how did your leadership stop come into play with your team you know to help them and enable them for these disruptions and for these transformations you know tell tell us a little bit more about you amy and and how you approach things yeah that's a good question um i've had really good examples of what what I believe is good leadership. Um, I have served for a few different leaders and I believe they were both servant leaders. And I see that in myself, right? You learn and then you, you do and maybe make some enhancements or changes based on your personality. But I really believe in that servant leadership, you know, kind of tying some empathy into that. Um, and I think this this thought process aligns well with working in a school district. Yeah. Um, you know, we're all here to serve our students and our staff and our community. And um, like I said, I've been really blessed to work for some good leaders myself, uh, which inspires me to do the same. Um, but every day I have the opportunity, I start with my senior advisory leadership team every morning. I have about an hour in the office to myself to kind of catch up on things. And then I dive, dive into the day with that team. And, um, this team really helps me solve problems within the day or we all kind of bounce ideas off one another. It, I, I don't know, it, it leads us to good places. If I, if I think back in time, we used to have a really big problem and I, I kind of touched on this a little bit earlier today with purchasing. Like we were getting things thrown at us willy nilly and days before they needed to be used. Um, so, you know, be like, oh, well, we just bought said thing and we need, we need this roster. Best of luck. Here's, here's the stuff. We, by the way, classes start tomorrow. So okay. this team was able to get together and has been in, in process for some, some time now to really find a way that now we are where we are, where everything gets vetted to align with that curriculum, to align with our network, to make sure there's data privacy in place. And, um, it's nice knowing that when you have a really good process, it can last through leaders, right? So this process that started in 2014 has been approved upon as we go, has lived through three different leaders, has lived through different staff. Um, but I think that all kind of ties in to how departments are led and how organizations are led. Oh, I love it. I love it. Leveraging legacy, positive legacy. Yeah for positive outcomes yes absolutely it's beautiful well i don't know if all of you listening can see it but we can definitely see the teacher in you and i say that with the most like deepest respect uh and love that i have for teachers like you just have this like 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 the empathetic like vibe about you that it just like oh you know you exude it so um yeah, this has been like super fun. I, I, I want to ask you a question since you were a teacher um, and since you work with teachers and if you had the opportunity to teach and, and speak to a room full of, let's do ninth graders. Okay. Um, let's do ninth graders. Um, and, and you have an opportunity to inspire them, you know, and you're thinking about your own journey, what lessons learned, what what message would you bring to these ninth graders um, so that they would be motivated to take on and take care of us <laughs> in the future when, when they get older? Right? Yes, yeah, we need them to. We, we're, we depend on Absolutely. that. <laughs> um, you know, I spent a few years working with women in technology and I co-chaired WIC for Girls. So okay. Women in Technology is an organization, there's three pillars. There's a pillar that focuses on our K-12 students, pillar that focuses on our college students, and then a pillar that focuses on women in the workplace. And when I would speak to the, the girls, we'd host multiple events each year. Most years we averaged a 
imp you know, impacting roughly two to 300 students every year through different events that we would put on. Um, but we would always make it a point to talk about being kind to one another. It seems like such a simple thing, um, but just thinking back on my own youth, girls can be mean to other girls for a random yeah. reason. Uh, but we talk about, yeah, being kind to one another and sticking up for one another, always assuming the best in other people. Like the person didn't walk into the room just to irritate you today um, or to be mean to you today, right? Like assume the best in people. Um, so I think that is a message that I, I would share with ninth graders as a whole, right? Because everybody can be nice to everybody. Um, and that lesson of assuming the best in people was shared with me by one of our librarians a few years ago. And she really checked me because I was you know, like, why isn't this person doing this? And that, you know, like getting my own irritations out there. And she's like, you need to assume the best in that person. I was like, oh yeah, you're right, I do. I do, you're right. Um, so I think that's something I would share back with those students. You know what, It it um, it's one of my favorite sayings, assume positive intent, and it makes walking through life a whole lot easier. Um, it really does, because uh, it can check your drama. Um, so I love that advice. I have really enjoyed this conversation today. It flew by, I can't believe how fast. Um, and just, you know, whether it's the Jetsons and we're taking off in drones, um, <laughs> bringing yes. innovation to the classroom, um, you know, just uh, not taking advantage or taking advantage of disruption um, and assuming positive intent, but finally be nice. I yeah, so crazy, right? Thank you, Amy. Yeah, you bet. Thank, Thank you. you. Wonderful. Um, I just learned so much. Thank you so much. Yes, yeah, so it was an honor talking with you today. Honor's mine. Take care, everyone.